Hello, everyone. Dr. Kevin Zadai with Warrior Nets and Warrior Nets um, School of Ministry, and welcome to our course on ground school for the private pilot's license and the uh, rating. So we're going to be going over in this course, we're going to be going over here uh, with Mia here, who is one of our students. We're going to be going over some of the questions that you could be asked on the uh, written exam. Now, as you may or may not know, there are different exams and different uh, ways that the FAA uh, teaches you and tests you. So there's there's teaching and tests, and, and some of the questions that you'll receive when you get your rating that you'll be be asked will be oral questions. So there'll be an oral question. And so every rating, you sit with an FAA, um, a designated um, examiner, DPE, and you have an oral examination, and then you have a flying portion of it where they test you. Mm -hmm. So they have their standards and they're already listed in the AIM. So there's like different, um, there's different ratings and we're talking about the private here, but each has a standard testing standard and you can find those online as well. And, mm -hmm. you know, we can, we can create links for that. But um, Mia, we're going to concentrate now on what we call the written test. Now the written test can actually be taken before you actually go. It is very much recommended that you do take it before you go for your FAA uh, exam, flying exam, and oral. So um, just so you know, um, you're starting your journey here by getting your private. But just so you know that I am, I am still taking examinations, written examinations, and oral examinations, and flying examinations, even at my level where I'm at, where it's the airline transport um, pilot. So ATP is, is one of the last ratings you have. I already have a type rating in a couple different aircraft. But just so you know, this is never going to end for you as far, and I, I just want to tell you that because you'll always be in the books, you'll always be yep. learning. So it's it's it, it's just easier for you to just uh, settle it within your heart that you're going to have to study a lot. And um, it's okay because to be a good pilot, you know, yep. you have to be diligent. So we're going to get started. Um, there is um, uh, a number of questions in the, the FAA wants you to learn um, several different um, areas of the airplane. So there's all kinds of, of different subjects involved. So they divide them up into uh, different categories. And so I'm going to start with questions about the flight controls to begin with. And just so you know, in each rating, there is about a thousand uh, possible questions that the FAA could ask you, but they are not going to tell you exactly which ones you're going to get asked. So what happens is you have to study the answers for all mm -hmm. of the questions and then you you can uh, take the test knowing the that you've studied the right answer to that question. And so you can recognize these by buying uh, the booklets that you can purchase mm -hmm. and then every year they update those. They're pretty accurate, you know, yeah. as far as um, I've noticed that if I study the, uh, the questions, um, it might seem overwhelming, but... You're going to have to know this stuff anyway, and it, it's not going to hurt you to know all this stuff. It's just a lot of information. Mm -hmm. But um, I've taken um, nine or ten of these these examinations, so um, I've I've studied over nine thousand <laughs> questions. So, um, and I've only been asked a hundred of them on each test. Okay, so we're just going to get started, Mia. Mia, um, one of the things uh, that is a is part of the flight controls is the flaps, and so mm -hmm. you have the flaps, which are. Um, it, they literally are part of the wing, but they yeah. are always extended. So mm. there, there are different purposes for the flaps, and some of them are for takeoff, some of them are for landing, and then there's uh, the position where they're just uh, completely up and neutral. They don't create any type of drag. And so okay. um, the configuration of the airplane is very important, and you'll find this out as a pilot. You're always uh, assessing and, and, and going through your mind Am I taking off? Am I landing? Or am I flying? And one of the things and one of the questions at the FAA, they, they want to concentrate that you understand the different phases of flight and what the flaps and, and the control surfaces are for. And the, it, with just so you know, it's very important because um, you don't want to extend flaps past the, the speed that they say for that aircraft because mm -hmm. it will overstress the aircraft. And it, it becomes a real expensive mistake to mm -hmm. extend your flaps when you're going too fast. Mm -hmm. It also has um, affects the stall characteristics of the airplane. So you don't want to stall the airplane. So the flaps can actually help you to fly at slower speeds. So the first question is, what is the is one purpose of wing flaps? 
And the question has um, three possible answers. One of them is to enable the pilot to make a steeper approach to a landing without increasing the airspeed. And B is to relieve the pilot of maintaining continuous pressure on the controls. Mm -hmm. And then C is to decrease the wing area to to vary the lip. Okay, mm -hmm. so the proper the proper answer is is uh, A, which was to enable a pilot to make steeper approaches mm -hmm. to a landing without incre increasing the airspeed. So so. Um, you know, when you're landing, you know, in most aircraft, if you do not have the flaps out, we mm -hmm. have, like in the jets that I fly, I have a warning that comes mm -hmm. just to tell you that you are slowing to a landing type of, mm -hmm. of, of, of a configuration, but you forgot your flaps. Mm -hmm. So, like, I have oral warnings, but yeah. see, in, in the airplanes that you're flying for a private pilot, they're not that sophisticated, mm -hmm. so you have to go through your checklist. Yeah. So. Here's the discussion that it, extending the flaps increases the wing camber um, and the angle of attack of the wing. This increase this this increases wing lift and induces drag, which enables a pilot to make steeper approaches to a landing without an increase in airspeed. Okay, so if you have an airplane like this is um, actually the airplane that was on at Southwest Airlines, if you the flaps are are located. Um, these these right here are flaps and these are flaps and these are ailerons right out here, which ailerons is another way uh, to steer the airplane um, with the, with with the wings. One would be up and one would be down, mm -hmm. so you'd have opposite happening if you're in a turn. However, here it's constant. You set that that mm -hmm. that that flaps. They would come out first couple sets of flaps. Uh, you know, on some airplanes like on your. On your trainer, it would probably just one set of flaps is going to change the the curvature. That's what they call the camber. Okay, so but on my airplane, the some the, some of the airplanes I fly, like the Gulfstream and the uh, Phenom three hundred, mm -hmm. it actually doesn't really change too much mm. the camber. It actually just extends out the wing and makes it just a wider wing. Mm. So it doesn't actually create too much drag on the first set. Mm -hmm. But I have four sets of flaps. Mm. On my airplane, whereas the Cessna, you have you have landing and takeoff, mm -hmm. and they have neutral. So when it t changes the curve, the camber, that's what they're talking about there. Mm -hmm. So that that would be very beneficial if you wanted it to land because, mm -hmm. but it's it does it does cause you to be able to descend yeah. at a greater rate and slow down. So so that's very important. So that's what the FA and that question is looking for. They're they're not looking for you just to make the right answer, but you got to understand exactly what's happening to the airplane and why it's so important okay mm -hmm. so that was question one and um we're going to go to question two one of the main functions of the flaps during approach and landing is to and then there's three possible answers so one of them is to decrease the angle of descent without increasing the airspeed that's a mm -hmm. and then b is permit a touchdown at a higher indicated airspeed and c is increase the angle of descent without increasing the airspeed. And the answer is actually C, which was increase the angle of descent without increasing the airspeed. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea is kind of like what we just discussed. It's yeah. kind of um, uh, an overlap of the first question. And, and just so you know, you might be asked one and not the other. And that's probably why all these questions seem related mm -hmm. because you just never know which one. The whole idea here is just making sure that, that when you extend the flaps for landing, the actual angle that you come down yeah. will be a greater, but yet it'll be at a slower airspeed. Mm -hmm. so what I think about, and this is this is what when you're answering questions with the FAA, just think of how uh, when a, you see a bird coming in to land, mm. they flare, they their yeah. wings flare. Well, that's their way of extending flaps. So they actually the whole they use the whole wing, but if you look, their wing area is mm -hmm. rotated so that they can kind of like slowly go. But you'll yeah. see they'll set down. That's the whole idea here is so it would be answer C is the correct one. And that is that you don't increase your airspeed because you don't want to get too fast on that, yeah. right? Because you'll, you'll float. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, that is that the other two are incorrect. And just so you know, my, my theory is, is that as, as, as students, you need to just concentrate on the right answer. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so when you're doing these on your own with the book, just look at the right answer um, I actually block out the wrong answers. I only 
want to know the right answer because yeah. when you take the test, you want to be able to see the right answer come right up. Mm -hmm. If you don't see the answer coming right up, that means they're all wrong answers, which isn't really possible. <laughs> so you'll see the right one and you'll yeah. know it. But I want all of you students to actually understand the science behind all this because it's not just passing your test. You want to become a good pilot. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, question three is, what is the purpose of the rudder on the airplane? So as we know, the rudder is actually on the the vertical tail. So you mm -hmm. have this right here is is the vertical tail. These are horizontal stabilizers. This is the vertical uh, stabilizers, if you can see that. So right here, you can see the rudder mm -hmm. is a portion in the back that that actually uh, swivels like this. So the 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 their question is going to be asked to you is what does that rudder do? Yeah. Okay, so the correct answer would be in a possible, well, let's just go over all the possible. To control yaw is A. B is to control overbanking tendencies. And then C is to control roll. And um, so we can see, you know, that based on the description already, that that the answer is A, which, which is that the rudder is used to control yaw. Okay, so yaw is is actually um, the airplane is on a, an axis of of up and down and then right and left like this banking, but it also can yaw so okay. that on this axis without turning. So yeah. when you hear yaw, you're not thinking about turning, so, mm -hmm. so to speak. You're talking about the fact that the the nose could be in a certain position but flying this way so mm, yeah. that is because the wind it's correcting for the the airplane actually wants to correct for wind so the nose will actually may turn into the wind in order to fight it mm. without banking so the rudder is not to control the the uh, turns the the rudder is to to, to control where the nose goes mm -hmm. and where the tail is okay so the rudder is very important now not so much in flight uh, do you use your rudder a lot in the in, during flight though like in straight and level where yeah. well yeah, that's much. because it pretty much just kind of like is stable right yeah so did you notice though that at certain times yeah especially on landing and, and when you got mm -hmm. a crosswind a little bit yeah that the nose like i said if the wind the, if the wind is coming from your left, mm -hmm. the airplane will actually want to come into the wind, mm -hmm. but the runway could be right here. Right. So you're going to be a little bit sideways, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's that's okay as far as being in the air, but before you touch down, and as you touch down, you want to bring the rudder into it and mm -hmm. bring the nose straight so that when you land, yeah, you're landing straight, but the, you, the wind is going to want to keep you like this. Well, it's okay to a certain point, but you want to get the rudder in there mm -hmm. and you want to bank into the wind. So you, you use the ailerons to bank, but the rudder brings the nose back to center line. You have to land so that you're straight because if not, how you land is how you're going to go on the runway. Yeah. Your nose is off like this. I mean, mm -hmm. has that happened to you yet? Yeah. Oh my, it's that's, so you, you're going to have to learn to use the rudder correctly. So yeah. Remember that, that the ailerons control the roll this way, but the rudder controls what? The yaw. Yaw. Okay. So where the nose is, is very important mm -hmm. in certain phases of flight. And so you want to use the rudder. So that's, that's what it is. Okay. Let's just go through another one here. Um, which is not a primary flight control service surface. And then the answers uh, could be flaps, stabilator, or ailerons. Okay, so flaps, stabilator, or ailerons is the possible ones, which is not a primary flight control surface. And the answer is flaps are not a primary flight control surface. Hmm. Okay, the reason why is, is that what they're at, the FAA is asking for is directional. So hmm. we know we've already discussed that the stabilator and the ailerons mm -hmm. control the the direction, right? The flight controls, yeah. The flight control services. Flaps is just to um, configure the airplane for a certain right. phase of flight, but it doesn't mm -hmm. have like the actual control, like yeah. uh, directional control. 
So flaps is kind of like, it, it's not considered. So the FAA is looking to see when they ask questions like this, they're wanting you to define and know what each surface does and, and what, what their purpose is. And yeah. flaps do not control directional control. Right. Right. So, so that's what they're going to look for in that. So we we're do, are you doing good with this? Yeah. Okay. All right. So the elevator controls, uh, question five says the elevator control m- controls movement around which axis. Now the elevator, the elevator is right here. These are elevator, the elevator surface. So let's be the horizontal. So this is the vertical stabilizer. This is a horizontal. And these, these control surfaces, some of them on airplanes, the whole thing moves. And others, it's just uh, the portion in the back half of the tail. Yeah. And then we also have trim as well. So then there's a trim tab as well, which is right here. There's little things mm-hmm. right here. Okay. But what they're asking here is the elevator, the whole the whole thing right here, controls movement around which axis. Okay. So we have we have the longitudinal is is A, lateral is B, and vertical is C. And the correct answer is B, lateral. Okay, so so if it's lateral, it says the elevator is the primary control device for changing the pitch uh. attitude, not altitude, attitude. So attitude is uh, and pitch is where the nose is. Yeah. So to increase the, the attitude of the airplane or uh, the pitch control, it's bringing, to raise it, you would bring the nose up. Mm-hmm. So this surface right here it can move this way and this way. It goes up and down. If you, if it if it's pointing if it points down, this gets higher in the back, mm-hmm. and that causes lift. So it brings yeah. the nose up. That's what they want you to know. So you may hear this question in multiple ways. The the, the actually the FAA changes these questions around every mm-hmm. year. So they they could they could be tricky at times, but yeah. it says that that what they're looking for is they want you to see that that elevator controls pitch. Yeah. Which, when you think of pitch, you're thinking of up and down. Mm-hmm. And it has to do with the nose. So if the nose goes up, then that means the tail's going to go down. Right. Okay, so it has to do with if you could put a string right in the middle here and you pictured it just hanging in a perfect balance like this, that would be neutral. If you wanted uh, the attitude to change, and you wanted the nose to come up, you would have to put the tail pointed down so mm-hmm. that when the wind came, it would hit and push the tail down. That'll bring the nose up. And that's what they're looking for you to understand. And and uh, there's also, like I said, trim, which is not the same thing. You have an elevator, which is your horizontal stabilizer, but th- they they um, that does not include pitch. Pitch mm-hmm. is something else. Pitch is a more of a fine, uh, the pit, the, the, uh, the uh, trim tab, I mean, mm-hmm. is, is is a fine tuning that go that is beyond. You want to set it with the yoke, mm. and then you want to trim it so that it's not a lot right. of hard movement either mm-hmm. way. So remember that the trim is something different. It's a little yeah. tab that's on all the surfaces. So you have tabs on the wings. You have tabs on on the control surfaces in the in the uh, tail, but they are not necessarily what you would use. To, to change the pitch, yeah. it's to fine tune mm-hmm. so that there's not, what you want is you don't want to feel a lot of pressure on the yoke. Right. You want to be able to, right? Mm-hmm. So do you use, have you learned to use the tr- mm-hmm. well? Yeah, but it's a pretty big wheel. Oh, that's right. Really, <laughs> on the 178, <laughs> yes. it's a wheel. Yeah. See, on the other planes, um, as you get faster and faster, high performance, mm-hmm. there's a little, yeah. hat, there's a little button on your yoke mm-hmm. and that's what I use to trim it as well. Yeah. So, okay. All right. Um, we'll do uh, one more question here. Which statement is true concerning primary flight controls? Which primary would be the main one? So uh, when you think about um, your main controls, you're talking about the wings and the tail, essentially, as, as your control, where your control services are primary. Okay, they have a couple of, they have three different possibilities here. A is the effectiveness of each control service increases with speed because there is more airflow over them. And then B is only when all three primary control surfaces move in sequence 
do the airflow and the pressure distribution change over and around the airfoil and C is primary flight controls include ailerons, rudder, elevator, and trim systems. And the correct answer is actually A. Mm. Even though the others sound really good, A is correct. And the reason why is the rudder and the aileron and the elevator effectiveness increase with speed because there is more airflow over the surface of the control. Mm. Okay, so remember, the FAA is wanting to to uh, see if you understand that Airflow is important, and it increases the effectiveness of the control services, and that's what you got to p- take away from that. So I I believe that this has helped you, and and uh, Mia, you're such a good student. You just but anyway, have you um have you noticed um have you been able um to actually land the plane yet? Because I know you mm-hmm. just started, right. Yep. Okay. What did you notice about the airplane? What was like one thing that you just noticed about the airplane that kind of surprised you? When you get into the, say you're 10 feet above the runway and you're you're ready to land, mm-hmm. what was the things that, that was happening? I know there's a lot happening, right? Yeah. But did you notice that um, if you're not really like in command of it, that it wants yeah. to do its own thing? Yeah, definitely. Okay. So would you say um, one of the big things, because I know what mine is, it's the wind, the wind yes, and things like that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, it does, sometimes the airplane doesn't want to stop flying. Yeah. No. So we call that floating. Mm-hmm. And so that has to do with the fact that um, whatever is going on with the air, whether it's mm-hmm. the wind or your speed, yeah. you're too fast. If you get too slow, you can slam it down, you know? Yeah. But then there. So what is one thing that you found really important if it doesn't seem to be working out right? What are, what are some of your options if landing mm-hmm. is... A, I mean, you can you can stick it out, right? And yeah. And keep your mm-hmm. keep your um your airplane lined up with the center, mm-hmm. line and just hold it until at idle. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. What's the other th- option that you have if it's not working out? Would you would you have you have to go around yet? We almost did at the last one. It was Is really you? windy. Okay. But he yeah. So there's two things that you can do, right? Mm-hmm. And you can you can just stick it out. Because if you have a lot of runway, you're okay. Yeah. You, uh, you just wait for your airspeed to bleed off, and you just keep mm-hmm. diligent to keep the airplane straight, right? Yeah. But the thing that I've noticed about pilots is they don't like to go around. They think that that's yeah. failure. Yeah. Okay, so have you gone over the procedures on what it is to go around? Um, no? Okay, so anyway, just in closing then, um, if you had to go around, the first thing you have to do is 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 uh increase your your power okay if you're if you're gonna go around mm-hmm. you don't want to pitch up if you're you haven't put power in right because you could stall it because you're at yeah speed close yeah but if it's not working out make sure that you you bring the nose level and you put mm-hmm. power into it you continue to keep the airplane straight mm-hmm. and then as you build up speed you want to get to the speed where for your for your aircraft where it's the best rate of climb out, yeah. out for takeoff, and um, you're in you're in land you're in landing flaps, which is still okay because you can still go mm-hmm. around with your landing flaps. But um, you want to build up your speed until it gets to the best rate of climb. Yeah, and then you can start to bring your nose up. Okay, mm-hmm. and then what else do you want to do with the, It has to do with the radio. Yeah, you do you want to like tell the tower. Yeah, of course. Until the tower, yeah, you're going to go missed. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the, you're you you're um you're you're coming along really well, and I'm just so excited. So I'm just appreciate Mia and everything that she's doing, and so all of you, uh, we're just going to go through all these questions, um, and you can just keep taking these courses, and it'll help you get ready. But just remember that um the one thing you have to settle in your mind is you're going to have to study and be diligent if you want to be a pilot. And you want to be a good pilot and a safe pilot. It 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 it's you just settle in your heart. Mm-hmm. You're just gonna to have to know this stuff. Yeah, you know? and don't fight it. Okay. <laughs> so this is Captain Kevin and Mia, and thanks for joining us on this course. And we'll see you next time on the next session. Bye bye.